The purpose of testing hearing is to aid in the process of making decisions regarding a person's type, whether it's conductive, sensory, neural, or mixed, and the extent how severe a person's hearing loss is. A reliability of the test is based on a relationship of such factors, including the calibration of the test equipment, so is the equipment working properly, the environment in which the testing is taking place. You're going to get different results if you're testing in a cafeteria versus testing in a sound isolated room. The patient's performance, if the patient understands what they're supposed to be doing, and the examiner's sophistication, if the audiologist knows what they're doing. It's not hearing that we're measuring, it's how our brain interprets and represents these sounds, these acoustic signals. So a person could have a healthy outer ear, a healthy middle ear, a healthy inner ear, but if their brain isn't making sense of the sounds, for example, a patient with severe dementia, then they're not necessarily hearing. Pure tone audiometry is performed with an audiometer, as you can see in that picture and that you'll see in your observations. It's used for determining the thresholds of hearing, and these thresholds are compared to norms at various frequencies. So a hearing threshold is the lowest level that someone can hear a sound and recognize it as a sound. And my threshold would be compared to an established norm of thresholds at a variety of frequencies that we test. And if I fall within that norm, then it's considered to have, then I am considered to have normal hearing. We test hearing two ways. Remember, we do air conduction, which tests the whole system, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear, and beyond, and bone conduction, which simply tests the cochlea and the auditory nerve. By testing two ways, we can figure out the type of hearing loss, whether it's conductive, sensory, neural, or mixed. For air conduction, the range of frequencies that we test are from 125 hertz all the way up through 8,000 hertz. And we test, um, so we could test this variety, right, this large amount, but in reality we only test the octaves, and we test at 250 hertz, 500 hertz, 1,000, 2, 4, and 8. If there's a big difference between scores or discrepancy, then we go back and we test interoctave, and that would be at 750 hertz or 1,500 hertz. But for a standard pure tone test, you start at 1,000 hertz, we do 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, 8,000, then we go back and we do 250 and 500 hertz. The range of intensities that are tested are from very low, so negative 10 dB HL, to a very high level, 110 dB HL. Normal is considered between 0 and 20 dB HL. If you get like negative 10 or negative 5, it's not like you have superhuman hearing, you do have very good hearing. It's just that your scores are like better than the norm. For bone conduction, we test a more limited range of frequencies. And there are a few reasons. Well, we test a more limited range of frequencies and we test a more limited range of intensities. The reason we test a more limited range of frequencies is because of the way the bone conduction vibrator works. So it's an oscillator that's put on your mastoid bone that vibrates the skull, it directly vibrates the cochlea. And if you were to use it at very high frequencies, there would be distortion and you wouldn't get a pure tone. Or, so that's why we don't test up to high frequencies or very low frequencies because we wanna avoid harmonic distortion from that vibrator. With intensities, we don't test at very high intensities because the higher the intensity, the more the oscillator vibrates and it could be that the patient is actually feeling it instead of um, listening or hearing the sound. The test environment is very important. A noisy test environment doing hearing screenings in a cafeteria as opposed to a nurse's office would probably create more children in need of follow-up, more children failing the screen. There are three ways to lessen background noise. You could use specifically designed headphones, test with insert earphones, or test in a sound-treated booth. So those heavy earphones aren't always great. They can become heavy and uncomfortable and sort of pull down on children's ears. So the best way to do testing is with insert earphones 
And these are the foam tips that are, um, you know, smushed together, then pushed into the ear canal where they expand. And they do a better job at blocking out background noise. So inserts are always better, but inserts are more expensive because they're disposable and you have to get rid of them after each patient. So sometimes you'll see um, it's more common to use the headsets. Except with children. With children, you should always really use insert earphones. There is no such thing as a soundproof room. It's impossible to remove all sound. There are sound isolated chambers, the audiometric booths that we use to separate sounds, you know, to make a really quiet space for testing hearing. And when you do your observations, observe the booth, how the walls are thick. They're used with insulating materials. There's dead air space. There's a solid door that has a tight acoustic seal. And the inside walls might be covered with soft materials to reduce reverberation. So that would give us a better test if you're tested in the audiometric suite. There are two designs. There's a one-room suite where the examiner and the equipment and the patient are in the single room. That's less common. Usually it's two rooms where um, the examiner is separated from the patient. So the best, mes best methods for testing include insert attenuation devices for the headphones or insert earphones in a sound-isolating chamber.